Do you see those eyes? Look at those eyes real carefully because you're looking in the eyes of a liar. This man has gotten a lot of people killed. And why? Because he couldn't tell the truth. He fabricated an event for the sheer purpose of dividing us racially. Today we're going to examine what he said and the truth. Hello out there. I am trying to get through. With his powerful brain waves cradled in the warmth of reasoning, it's time for Johnny Walker Dread to straighten you out on a thing or two. Emanating all the way from exciting Las Vegas, Oklahoma, it's the Johnny Walker Dread Show. The man you're seeing is named Dorian Johnson, and his best friend was Michael Brown. They were walking down the middle of a street in Ferguson, Missouri, shortly after Michael Brown stole some cigarillos from a local store. Let's listen to Dorian lie. It was around 1.42 o'clock. We were walking down the street, an uh, empty street. We were just walking down, minding our own business. We are both... That's right. They were just walking down the street, minding their own business after robbing a local store. Headed home, and the officer is approaching us. And as he pulled up on the side of us, he didn't say freeze, hope, or nothing like we were committing a crime. He said, Get the F on the sidewalk. I told the officer we were not but a minute away from the destination. He's at an angle where we're so close to his door and him that when he tries to thrust the door open aggressively, it doesn't come an inch out before it strikes both of us. Uh, his arm extended out the window grabbed my friend around the neck. He didn't say step back or anything like that. He started to pull my friend into the window. So the yeah, that's a very common tactic used by the police. What they do is they grab you by the neck and then try to pull you through the window of their squad car. Yeah, police do this all the time, especially when they are attempting to arrest somebody who is six foot five and 289 pounds. That's a really good tactic. Yeah, we believe this crap. The officer's trying to pull him in, and he's pulling away from the officer. He never once attempted to grab for this officer's weapon. He's still holding my friend with one arm. Yeah, we'll see about that. He never tried to grab a hold of the officer's weapon bit. Mm -hmm. And now with the other hand, he's pointing his weapon. The second time he says, I'll shoot, it wasn't even a second later before the gun just went off. And the officer let go. And that's how we were able to run at the same time. The first car I see, I duck behind for cover because I fear for my life. I'm scared. I don't know what's going on. I don't understand why this officer is shooting his weapon at us. And I'm looking. I'm watching the officer. He's pursuing my friend now that he fired another shot. It struck my friend in the back. The bullet struck my friend in the back. We'll, we'll see about that. Then my friend stopped running. His hands immediately went in the air and he turned around towards the officer face to face. He started to tell the officer that he was unarmed and that you should stop shooting me. Before he can get his second sentence out, the officer fired several more shots into his head and chest area. And he fell dramatically in a fatal position. I did not hear once he yelled, freeze, stop, or hope. It was just horrible to watch. <laughs> it hurt him a lot. And they complained about Kyle Rittenhouse and his fake tears. I see it in his eyes. It hurt him a lot. It was definitely like being shot like an animal. It was almost like putting someone to execution. He was a peaceful person, and he lived his life peaceful. I definitely think he's guilty of murder. Mm -hmm. He lived a peaceful life, never minding the fact that he shoved the clerk at the store just minutes before this. Okay, so let's take a look at Michael, peaceful life, Brown, as he enters the store earlier in the day. Keep in mind, this is only minutes before he was confronted by Officer Darren Wilson. And by the way, the person with him, well, that's Dorian Johnson, the guy who was just speaking to us about how peaceful Michael Brown truly was. You can see him there. He's huge. Again, six foot five, 290 pounds. Michael Brown on the right, Dorian Johnson on the left.
Yeah. Now here comes the store clerk. Hey man, you're stealing my merchandise. Now of course, Peaceful Life Brown is going to say, Oh, you're right, that was a mistake. I am so sorry. Here, let me pay for these. Or, here's your cigarellos back. I wouldn't want to take them because I'm living a peaceful life. Let's see what Michael Brown does. The store owner tries to get in front to stop him. And very peacefully, Michael Brown pushes him into the rack of food and then threatens him. Yes, this is peaceful life living. This is how it's done when you want to live like Gandhi or the Dalai Lama. This is how you do it. This is the shooting that started the riots in Ferguson and started up the whole Black Lives Matter deal in the first place. And ever since then, we've had riots, people shot, buildings burned down, all because of the testimony of that dude. Now, keep in mind what he is saying. One, that the police officer chased Michael Brown and shot him in the back. And then Michael Brown falls to the ground. He gets up, he turns around, he's on his knees, and he says, I'm unarmed, don't shoot, and the officer just executed him. That's what he is saying. But what really happened? Let's take a look at what Officer Darren Lewis said. And now we're going to hear the other side of the story. Keep in mind, both these guys can't be both telling the truth. One has to be telling the truth. One has to be lying. This is Officer Darren Wilson describing what happened that day. I used my door to try and push him back and yell at him to get back. And again, he just pushed the door shut and just stares at me. And as I look back at him, all of a sudden, punches start flying. He, he threw the first punch? Yes. He threw the first one and hit me in the uh, left side of my face. I just know there was a barrage of swinging and grabbing and pulling for about 10 seconds. At some point, he was actually in the car physically. Like, he had ducked his head and came into the vehicle with me. Where now, keep in mind, Darren Wilson here is going on and being interviewed by George Stephanopoulos, a liberal. That shows that he has confidence in his story. He's not going to Fox or he's not going to any of the news channels where he thinks he would get a very welcoming reception. George Stephanopoulos, as a left-winger, is actually pretty fair. He's one of the better ones. I haven't seen really a lot of really underhanded things coming out of him. So if I'm going to go to the left and do an interview, he would not be such a bad choice. But keep in mind, he is going into the lion's den here, and that does show that his story has some credibility. Where's your gun at that point? I keep it on my right hip. Mm -hmm. I take it out and I come up, I point it at him. And when I said, I said, get back or I'm gonna shoot you. And then his response immediately, he grabbed the top of my gun. And when he grabbed it, he said, you're too much of a to shoot me. And while he's doing that, I can feel his hand trying to come over my hand and get inside the trigger guard and try and shoot me with my own gun. Wilson got off two shots in the car before Brown started to run. And after I fired that shot, I look over, He's running. It went off that time. It did go off that time. He starts to run, and I see the dust cloud behind him, and I'm like, okay, I missed. That was my, the round didn't hit him. Then I go to exit my car, and when I'm getting out, I use my walkie, and I say, shots fired, send more cars. That was backed up by dispatch reports. And I start chasing after Michael Brown. You described Michael Brown when you saw him in that moment in the car as a demon. Do you know where that word came from? Do you know, it, 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 what were you seeing at that moment? It was just such a high level of intensity and aggression and anger that it was almost unfathomable to even see it. Like, how is this happening? Like, it was shock. And you're positive. You're positive you'd have that exact same reaction if you were white. Yes. Some of the witnesses have said they thought you were out of control, that somehow you had snapped. Mm -hmm. That would be incorrect. There was never... The only emotion I'd ever felt was fear, and then it was survival and training. We know from the autopsy reports that uh, no shots went into Michael Brown from the back. Mm -hmm. Did you fire any shots when he was running away? No. So you only fired to his front? Correct. Keep in mind, he made this statement when he first was questioned right after the shooting. He doesn't know if people haven't captured this on video. 
And so he would be easily found to be a liar if he clearly shows that he is shooting at Michael Brown as Michael Brown is running away. He's a cop. He very well knows that a lot of people have cell phone footage these days, especially after a scuffle has been breaking out between a cop and a suspect. And yet he unequivocally says no. Lends credibility to a statement. As you know, some of the eyewitnesses have said when at that moment when he turned around, he turned around and put his hands up. That would be incorrect. Incorrect. No way. No way. Yes. No way. And again, he said that same story before, and he knows that there are going to be people who may have footage of that, which would show him to be a liar. And yet he came out unequivocally and said that did not happen. Some witnesses have also said that they actually saw you stand over him That'd and be shoot incorrect. him on top of his head. That would be incorrect. And he's down now. Yes. You know he's dead? Yes. You know, they tell you afterwards, you know, there's going to be times you don't remember where it's fast, sometimes where it's slow. Well, that was the point of, like, the slow motion for me. And I saw the face that he had go blank. His, everything was just blank. And I knew immediately that he had passed. And what did you think? I need help. You know, I got back on the radio and I said, uh, send a supervisor in every car we have. You'd never even shot your gun before. By the way, that was also cooperated with transcripts from Radio Dispatch. And now a man is dead. Mm -hmm. Does that put you in shock? What is it, you know, what's going through your mind at that point? What are you feeling at that point? Shock would be a good way to describe it. And there's not a cop out there who goes out there and like, you know, I'm going to use my gun today. No one wants to. No one ever wants to do that. And it just happened, and it happened in a minute. The Brown family came out with a statement where they said, we are profoundly disappointed that the killer of our child will not face the consequences of his actions. What do you think when you hear that? I think those are grieving parents who are mourning the loss of their son. They're saying that you have to face the consequences of your actions. Mm -hmm. You think there's anything you can say to them that could change their minds or change their hearts? I don't think there's anything they could say, but again, you know, I'm sorry that their son lost his life. It wasn't the intention of that day. It's what occurred that day. And there's no, nothing you can say that's going to make a parent feel better. Do you feel any remorse? Everyone feels remorse when a life's lost. Like I told you before, I never wanted to take anybody's life. You know, that's not the good part of the job. That's the bad part of the job. So yes, there is remorse. George, as you know, a lot of reaction to the interview and people not only listening closely to what he said, but how he said it. And, and many people are, are questioning his demeanor. Yeah, not many people. She is. Give me a break. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's very straightforward, very clinical in describing mm -hmm. what happened. He's been telling exactly the same story since he first went back. That's right. He's been telling the same story. He hasn't changed it at all to the police station that afternoon. But you're right, not a lot of emotion bubbling up there. He sees himself simply as a police officer doing his duty that day, and he's not going to give much more than, than those facts. And in fact, he told you he just felt that he was doing his job. And because of that, he says he has a clean conscience. Okay, you can see why I think that George Stephanopoulos is not a bad person to go to if you're looking for an interview. Uh, he's pretty fair to Darren Wilson there at the end. Now, how do we tell which one is lying? We have witnesses that support both sides in this. We can separate these witnesses into four basic categories. One, witnesses that support Officer Darren Wilson's account of things and are deemed credible. Number two, officers that support Darren Wilson's take on things but are deemed unreliable. Three, witnesses that support Dorian Johnson's view of things and are deemed credible. And finally, four, witnesses that support Dorian Johnson's take on things and are deemed unreliable. Stay tuned for future videos in this series where we examine eyewitness testimony from the grand jury report. Like my video, subscribe to my channel.